so the way that I approach this, when I'm given these lists of limits, here's what I do. I read them all first, okay? I don't start drawing anything until I've read everything. And I kind of get a little bit of a mental picture for myself. The limit as we approach zero is positive infinity, okay? The limit as I approach zero is positive infinity. Now, what that tells me is they didn't give me a one-sided limit. They just said the limit as we approach zero is positive infinity. So that means on both sides of zero, I am going to be approaching positive infinity. Uh, B, the limit as we approach two from the right is positive infinity. So on the right side of two, I'm going to be going up. The limit as I approach two from the left is one. And I should be headed towards the infinite point. So that point in time, we are going up two. As I approach infinity on the right side of my graph, I'm headed towards two. As I approach negative infinity, I'm headed towards one. And then it tells me that my function is continuous everywhere except at zero and at two. So let's start to put these together here. So as I'm approaching zero, I'm going towards positive infinity. Like I mentioned before, it wasn't a one-sided limit. It was a two-sided limit. So both sides, left and right of zero, are going towards positive infinity. Now, I'm not going to put that much because I don't know how it's going to connect to the rest of the function. So I've got that one. As I approach two from the right, I'm headed towards positive infinity. So I'm going to do the same thing there. Two from the right, I'm headed towards positive infinity. I'm not going to draw too much of the graph. I'm just putting a little tail there because I don't know what else is going on. Two from the left, my limit is one. So the easiest way to express that is to just put that at two, the value of my function is one. Now that is coming from the left side. And I'm going to go ahead and connect this part of my graph because they didn't tell me anything else about any x values between zero and two. So I know because it's a function, those two pieces are going to have to connect there. All right, now the limit as I approach infinity of two, I always leave the infinity limit for last um, because I want to make sure that I get everything else in there. So as I go to positive infinity, my function is going to two. Well, the only part of the graph that I've got here is this part. So I'm going to continue this and I'm going to make it approach uh, a y value of two. Now, the thing about these is that your graph does not have to match mine exactly, okay? But it just has to have these characteristics. Now, I do not suggest throwing a whole bunch of extra stuff in there, but it just has to have these characteristics. Uh, it will not necessarily match mine correctly, okay? Um, and then as I'm approaching negative infinity, I am approaching a y value. Everything's checked off. The last thing that I want you to check off on this is to make sure that your function passes the vertical line test because these are functions, okay? But in the past, the biggest issue that I've had is that people have crazy stuff drawn on their paper. They have like overlapping pieces, okay? But it doesn't even pass the vertical line test. So take a split second at the end to just kind of look across your graph and make sure that you're not hitting it more than one point anywhere on your graph, okay? So we'll get you. Um, what I mean is that sometimes people, uh, this isn't the best one to try and illustrate it on, but I don't know. I need to start keeping these samples so I can show, but anyways, let's, uh, let's look at another one, okay? Let's look at another one on the front of your paper. The limit as we approach infinity of this function is two. As we approach negative infinity is zero, saving those for the end. As we approach zero from the right, we're going to positive infinity. And go ahead and put that in there. Okay, zero from the right is positive infinity. Zero from the left is negative infinity. As we approach four, the limit is three. 
but this is why I read it all first. I'm not going to put a point at 4, 3, because what do they tell us? F of 4 is 6. So at 4, 6, I'm going to plot that point, okay, because I know that about my function. As I approach 4, the limit is 3. Well, the easiest way to express that is it's a whole. We're headed towards 3, but at 4, we actually equal 6. So put your hole there at 4, 3. Those are the only details we have. The only thing we've got left here is to fill in our infinite limits. As we approach positive infinity, our function is approaching 2. So I'm going to start in my hole here, and I'm going to approach a y value of 2. And then I need to connect it to my limit at zero. <clears throat> the only thing that I have left is my limit as I approach negative infinity and it's approaching zero. So I'm gonna take, whoops, that's not very good. I'm gonna take uh, the part of the graph that I already have and I'm going to, as it approaches negative infinity, I'm going to have it approach zero. My function is continuous except for it's zero, which I knew zero was a vertical asymptote because its limits are going to infinity and negative infinity. And except for f4, which I knew I had 